Hello, young scholars. It's Jonathan Hurley, Sadita Dragon, and fellow teacher Liz Arana back here for another video. Today, I want us to begin talking about water. Scholars, do me a favor and take a look at this map of New York State. Any areas marked in blue represent a body of water, like a river or a lake. How many bodies of water do you estimate that there are in New York State? There are many bodies of water on this map. I estimate that there are 50. No, I can observe more than 50. I estimate that there are 200. You are both wrong. In New York State, there are actually 7,600 different bodies of water. 7,600? I had no idea New York had so much water. It's true. From the Hudson River and the Atlantic Ocean in the east, and the Great Lakes and Niagara River in the west and everywhere in between, this land is covered with water. For millions of years, water has nurtured plants, animals, and people like you and me. Water allows us to travel and trade with each other. The energy of water can even be harnessed to power machines, even generate electricity. To borrow a phrase from the Haudenosaunee Thanksgiving Address, Water is life. In our next few episodes, we're going to be exploring different bodies of water across New York State and the impact they have had on our history. And since we're here in Buffalo, we may as well start with a waterway that's right next door. Mr. Hurley, are you ready? I sure am. Scholars, let's go exploring at Niagara Falls. Mr. Hurley, where are you? I'm currently biking north of the Niagara River. The Niagara River is a 36-mile stretch of fresh water on the western edge of New York State. This waterway connects two of the Great Lakes with each other, Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. Also, this waterway serves as part of our border between the United States and Canada. As you can see, the farther north I travel, the water becomes more foaming and rapid. You even begin to hear sounds of distant crashing. If you make it far enough, you will reach the source of that chaos. Behold, Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls is one of the seven natural wonders of the world, and for good reason. It contains the most powerful waterfall in North America. 3,000 tons of water flow over the falls every Second. That mass is roughly equal to 500 elephants, or 16 Boeing 747 airplanes. Looking at our map of the Niagara River, Niagara Falls is currently located here. However, this was not always the case. If we look back in time, almost 12,000 years into the past, Niagara Falls was originally located here. How could a waterfall mysteriously move almost 9 kilometers? The answer is erosion. Every winter for the last 12,000 years, the rushing torrent of water over the falls freezes over, forming mountains of ice. This yearly freezing and thawing of water slowly erodes or breaks down the rocks below the falls. This process is similar to the glacial erosion that helps shape the Adirondack Mountains. This process of erosion is very slow, but is constantly happening. This map here shows how the location and shape of Niagara Falls has changed just over the past few hundred years. Wow, what an amazing reminder of the power water can have. And, and speaking of power, who, who do I see there? This man's name is Nikola Tesla. Tesla was born in Eastern Europe in 1856 and immigrated to New York in 1884. Tesla was a brilliant thinker and inventor, and he played a major role in the scientific revolution that took place right here in Niagara Falls. 
Clearly, the rushing waters of Niagara Falls carry a lot of kinetic energy. In the year 1882, businessman Jacob F. Shelkoff successfully began harnessing that energy, using it to create electricity. Electrical energy that is generated from the energy of water is called hydroelectricity, and it was made possible through a relatively new piece of technology called a hydroelectric generator. In Shelkoff's original power station, a man-made canal would carry water from the Niagara River and redirected into a series of turbines. The energy of this water would cause the turbines to spin, which in turn began to spin a series of magnets past coils of copper wire. This spinning of magnets around copper generated electrical power. While the Shelkoff power station was the first of its kind, the electricity it produced had limits. Electrical energy could not yet be transported over great distances, meaning that the neighboring cities like Buffalo we're still left in the dark. Enter Nikola Tesla. One of Tesla's greatest achievements was conceiving of a new method of transporting electricity over great distances, called alternating current. This idea was revolutionary for its time, and many of Tesla's contemporaries, including famous inventor Thomas Edison, strongly believed alternating current would never work. However, after partnering with businessman George Westinghouse, Tesla was able to design a new generation of hydroelectric generators. Generators that used to be located right here. This is the Adams Plant Transformer House, the last remaining building of the Edward Dean Adams Power Plant. Built in 1895, it was the first large-scale, alternating current, hydroelectric power plant in the world. Through its use of alternating current, the Adams Power Plant was was able to successfully send hydroelectricity 20 miles south to the city of Buffalo. Eureka! Let there be light! Thanks to their new source of hydroelectricity, Buffalo quickly became known as the City of Light. Fast forward to the present day, Niagara Falls is New York State's biggest electricity provider. Behind Mr. Hurley is the Robert Moses Niagara Power Plant, a hydroelectric power plant that generates 2.6 million kilowatts of electricity each year. That is about one quarter of the electricity used by 8 million New Yorkers combined. So scholars, next time you turn on your classroom light, say thank you to Niagara Falls. If you ever visit Niagara Falls, you cannot leave without taking a ride on one of its most popular tours. Running since the year 1864, the Made of the Mist Boat Tour takes you up close and personal to each of the three separate waterfalls that make up Niagara Falls. Horseshoe Falls, American Falls, and Bridal Veil Falls. 1.4 million people ride the Made of the Mist each year, and every single one of them has gotten soaked. Believe me, I was no exception. Can somebody get me a towel over here? The Maid of the Mist is a very fun tour, but to me, it also serves as an important reminder of this area's history. Throughout Niagara Falls' 12,000 year life, it has been called home by many different indigenous tribes and nations. In fact, the falls name comes from the Otter Wanderin, or the Neutral Confederacy, a group of indigenous nations that have lived on the banks of the Niagara River for thousands of years. It was the Neutral Confederacy who named the river Angiara which would later transform into Niagara after the arrival of the Europeans. Niagara Falls is considered to be a sacred place for many indigenous nations. The water of the falls is seen as a symbol of power, healing energy, and home to a group of spirits called the Thunder Beings. In the oral tradition of the Seneca Nation, there is a story told about a young woman we now popularly call the Maid of the Mist. In this story, the Maid of the Mist alone and distraught, tries to take her own life by sailing over Niagara Falls in a canoe. The Thunder Beings save this young woman, and through their efforts, she's able to heal and find peace. The connection between Niagara Falls and indigenous nations remains strong to this day. Today, the Tuscarora Nation resides on the Niagara River in present-day Lewiston. On the other side of Niagara Falls resides the largest community of indigenous people in Canada, the Six Nations of the Grand River. The Seneca Nation owns and operates a casino in Niagara Falls that generates millions of dollars in revenue each year. This, however, does not mean that things are perfect. For hundreds of years, dating back to the arrival of Europeans in the 1600s, indigenous nations have had to constantly deal with outsiders 
moving on to their ancestral homeland. Remember the Robert Moses Niagara power plant? That structure is actually located on land that used to be owned by the Tuscarora Nation. It was taken by New York State Power Authority in 1960 through a legal process called eminent domain. The Tuscarora Nation would fight New York State, arguing that the state had no authority to use land that belonged to them. The Tuscarora Nation took their case all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, but ultimately lost. To build the Robert Moses Niagara Power Plant, Tuscarora families were forced to relocate or move out of their home. This history between the Tuscarora and the New York State Power Authority is complicated, and it introduces a core concept that I hope, scholars, you will think seriously about as we move through our next few episodes. How can we use the natural resources around us, like water, responsibly? When we make decisions about how to use water, like building a hydroelectric power plant, will that decision affect everybody equally? Who will benefit? Who will get hurt? These kinds of questions get to the core of something called environmental justice, a concept that we will explore further in future videos. Scholars, thank you so much for joining us today as we explored Niagara Falls. I look forward to seeing you again as we explore more waterways throughout New York State. Remember, no matter how far you've come or how much you've learned, there is always more to explore. See you next time. Bye, everyone.